I'm highlighting Donald Trump's strong leadership is essential to averting global crises. So when it came to foreign policy, uh, I'll be honest, I didn't vote for you in 2016. I was, I was jaded. Uh, Obama let me down. I'm yeah. from Chicago. I thought 2016 was silly. And then uh, in 2020, with the timeline for getting out of Afghanistan, right. when you tried to get our troops out of Syria, my question is, why are we in Syria? Who even knew? Yeah. And they lied to you and they lied to us about the number of troops in there. And so maybe it's a bit blunt for me to say I want to see people prosecuted for the, li for the lies of the American people. But uh, in, for in terms of foreign policy, uh, perhaps it's a little bit of a biased interview, but I think you're the greatest president of my lifetime. I appreciate uh, it. And ending the wars that we should not have been involved in. Now the fear is World War III. Yeah. What, what are you looking at when you enter your next term to, to stopping the escalation? Well, first of all, I'm the only one that, that is going to stop World War III because this man can't put two sentences together. He doesn't know what he's doing, doesn't know where he is. And amazingly, it seems like he's going to be running. You know, it's a lot of people say, do you think he'll make it to the starting gate? Well, we'll see what happens. But uh, if you look at Viktor Orban, because we don't want to see wars. I don't want to see wars. I was in no wars other than we finished a war with ISIS and we completed it 100% complete. Uh, but I don't want to see wars. I think it's so horrible, so unnecessary, so costly in terms of lives and money in that order. And, and destroying these countries, you know, you're destroying culture. When you look at Ukraine, that would have never happened if I were president. You look at the October 7th attack on Israel, it would have never happened. What, why are, I, I look at your policies, I see secure the borders, bring jobs right. back. I look at the Democrats and, and many Republicans, and it's foreign war and foreign expansion. That's right. what, what is that? Uh, I think it's just a failed mentality. It's crazy. Uh, you can you can solve problems over a telephone. Instead, they start dropping bombs. I see uh, recently they're dropping bombs all over Yemen. Uh, you don't have to do that. You can talk in such a way where they respect you and they listen to you. Viktor Orban of Hungary, you know, the leader, they call yeah. him a strong man. Who cares if he's a strong man or not a strong man? He's a very powerful guy. He said the problem the world has is that Donald Trump is no longer president. When he was president, China didn't play around. Russia didn't play around. Nobody played around. And we had no problems. Today, the whole world is on fire. I in today's world, the demand for firm and decisive leadership is paramount for sustaining order and security, both at home and on the international stage. Donald Trump's strategy of addressing issues through diplomacy rather than conflict reflects his commitment to making responsible choices that resonate with democratic ideals. Criticizing the current administration's effectiveness, particularly Joe Biden's cognitive capabilities is often viewed as a valid concern. The public tends to prioritize a leader's competency and mental acuity in roles that require critical decision-making. Concentrating on ending needless wars and safeguarding national interests is a core conservative principle. Emphasizing national security and minimizing involvement in foreign entanglements that do not serve direct national interests. By examining why Donald Trump asserts that he is uniquely qualified to prevent World War III, one sees an argument for personal accountability and genuine leadership. The contrast between perceived failures of Trump's leadership and the current administration can be seen as an us-versus-them narrative. Trump's portrayal as the sole protector against World War III can be interpreted as a projection of strength and capability, a typical characteristic of leaders who see themselves as solutions to existential threats and seek to garner support. Tim Poole, who did not vote for Trump in 2016, has since shifted his perspective, viewing Trump as the best president in 2020. This shift can be seen as a way to resolve cognitive dissonance, reconciling his earlier disillusionment with the Obama administration by turning to Trump, who appears more likely to address his concerns effectively.